Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let me make um, some preliminary remarks. First of all, we have uh, put our conclusion in a Eurogroup statement, which will be distributed to you. Maybe you have it already. Uh, this was not agreed by the Greek uh, representatives in the Eurogroup. Uh, is this working at all? Okay. Uh, so it was a statement by 18 ministers, uh, and you'll see a footnote making clear that the Greek representatives in the Eurogroup cannot agree with this statement. Second uh, preliminary remark, we will immediately after this, after this press conference have a second meeting uh, to discuss uh, any consequences uh, from the political conclusion just drawn uh, and to uh, prepare for whatever is needed uh, to make sure that at all times the stability of the Eurozone remains at its high level. Um, as I said this morning when I came into the building, we were negatively surprised by the steps that the Greek government took last night. Uh, first of all, if you remember, after the last Eurogroup, I said that the door was still open and we were still prepared and the institutions were still prepared to look at last proposals from the Greek side and to continue talks. These were actually going on, these talks, last night between the institutions and uh, representatives of the Greek authorities uh, when uh, these representatives were called out and had to leave the meeting. This took place last night. And that basically brought the talks to an end. Uh, very quickly, it was made clear why that took place. The Greek government has decided to respond negatively to the proposals which the joint institutions had put on the table. They rejected those proposals. And the joint opinion of the other 18 members of the Eurogroup is that they very much regret this that they regret the fact that last night these talks were broken off and that today no further negotiations or talks were possible. Not only have the governments, the Greek government, uh, rejected the last proposals by the uh, institutions, you have to realize that those proposals uh, took maximum use, already made maximum use of the flexibility that the Eurogroup uh, allowed in this process. We uh, addressed those two kinds of flexibilities in our statement on the 20th of February. We were prepared to take into account uh, the recent economic developments in Greece. There has been a major setback in the economic uh, situation. And secondly, there was flexibility to allow the new Greek government to propose alternative ways to bring Greece uh, back on a sustainable path, fiscally, economically, financial stability. Um, the uh, institutions in their proposals have made, as I said, maximum use of that kind of flexibility. Uh, even though, nonetheless, uh, the Greek authorities have rejected those proposals and decided to put a proposal to their parliament, which is debated right now, uh, to have a referendum with a negative advice on the proposals. So the process wasn't finished as far as we are concerned. Uh, the proposals weren't definitive, they weren't formally discussed or decided upon the Eurogroup, and yet the Greek government has broken off the, uh, the process, has rejected the proposals, and is now putting them, which is also an unfair way to put it to the Greek people, putting them now to the Greek people in a referendum with a negative advice. Given that situation, I think we must uh, conclude that, uh, however regretful, that the program will expire on Tuesday night. Uh, that is the latest date we could have uh, reached an agreement, uh, and uh, it will expire on Tuesday night. And as I said, we will reconvene directly after this press conference to look at further steps to take, determined as we are to maintain the strength and the credibility of the Eurozone. That's all. There are a number of people right there. Maybe we can take them all, one after each other. Mr. Dysablum, what would a no in the referendum mean for the institutions, and what a yes? 
That is a difficult question for me to answer. Many ministers in the Eurogroup today raised exactly that question to our Greek colleague. What does it mean if the Greek people say yes? Notwithstanding the fact that the Greek government will campaign no. Uh, the Greek authorities, the Greek ministers said he would then, the government would then immediately implement the agreed package. Uh, but there are great concerns of credibility. Our experience is throughout the years with different programs that the only way programs will work can be successful if there is ownership. If governments believe that what they have to do may be harsh in the short run but will deliver results in the, in the long run. And if a government has spoken so negatively about the package, even last night the Prime Minister, so negatively about the approach, uh, then there is little credibility that even after a yes, they will um, implement it in a right and, and conscientious way. So that's a big problem. Of course, if there is a no, the suggestion may be to Greek people that there is a much better deal, a much better deal ahead, and negotiations can open. Uh, but I think you have to realize that in the in-between period, the situation in Greece will deteriorate very rapidly. Uh, there is no time to take that long. Uh, the, the Greek authorities have asked for a month extension. But in that month, there can be no disbursements. The program is still not on track. Uh, how does the Greek government think it will survive and deal with its problems in that period? I do not know. And in then, e even if all those problems were overcome and there would be a uh, no, uh, the possibilities of getting a much better deal, so to speak, uh, are in my mind limited in three uh, uh, aspects. Any program, any outcome, and as far as we are concerned, the talks could still have continued. Any outcome would have to deliver in economic terms, fiscal terms, and financial stability terms. And therefore, easy programs are not available. That's, that's the truth. And if the Greek government is not prepared to accept that truth and take that to its voters, then they have a credibility problem. The lady right behind. Yeah. No, no, you were, no, the, 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 that lady. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Hi, Gabriel Steinhauser from the Wall Street Journal. Is there anything the Greek people can now do to still stay in the euro, i.e., if they vote yes in a supposed referendum, would the eurozone still be available to provide new rescue loans? Or is this proposal right now, is it off the table? Is there nothing the Greek people can do to stay in the eurozone? I think we will have to take it step by step. The proposal of this referendum with a negative advice on what now is on the table is in the Greek Parliament. And I think the Greek Parliament has a right to fully understand what options are actually on the table. Both in substance, they have to realize that the process was never finished. There is no comprehensive package agreed by the Eurogroup. Uh, and also in terms of risks that they will enter into in the coming weeks. We cannot help that. And I'm very, uh, I speak with regret about those risks, but they will be there. Um, and I think that the Greek Parliament, who is now first uh, in a position to take a decision, must consider uh, where we are in the process, uh, whether they have been informed rightly about the substance of the program or, or the offer, uh, and what is ahead. Only then can the Parliament take a wise decision. Um, the gentleman with the glasses in the Roby front here. Oh, that's it, and then we'll move somewhere else. Athanasius with the Real News Star Channel, Greece. Uh, Mr. President, if the offer and the program expires on the 13th of June, then what are the Greeks are going to vote for on the 5th of July if there is no program and the, no measures and no pack to decide on? What are they going to be voting for? You're in asking, essence, you're asking me a question that you might ask, if I may suggest, to the Greek government. I cannot answer it. We have an uh, agreement with them already extended for four months on the basis that we would have reached an agreement actually at the latest in April, if I remember correctly. But certainly it would have been clear that it was a four-month extension. Uh, we have been and are up to now prepared to support Greece further on their path of recovery. But it has to be on the basis of a credible package. 
and there has to be ownership on the side of the Greek government. Neither is available at the moment. That's all I can tell you. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Dysobloom, Ian Trainer from The Guardian. Can you clarify, please, what you think the situation is? You say that the, the program expires on Tuesday evening, uh, June the 30th. Legally, in your view, does the emergency liquidity assistance, can that still be provided in any form if there is no program operating? That is a question that the government, governing council of the ECB will have to uh, look at and answer. Uh, I cannot intervene there. They are independent. Uh, yes, one more uh, on that side, and then we'll go over there. Uh, Ivo Caizzi, Corriere della Sera. Uh, President Dasselbaum, we are at a stage that maybe we can make a balance of this four months negotiation. At the beginning, we had a big exposition that was on the shoulder of mostly private banks. Now, the exposition switched to the government. Who takes the political responsibility if Greek uh, government won't be a in the condition to pay, pay back his debt. That will be, at this stage, on the shoulder of the taxpayer of the Eurozone. Um, I think you're jumping to conclusions. Uh, it is the responsibility of the Greek government, in any situation, uh, to stand up to its obligations to its financial creditors. Uh, and first of all, the loans to the IMF uh, will come up. Uh, but you're quite right, there is, uh, over the years, the Eurozone has given very, very large financial support to Greece at more and more friendly rates and maturity length. Um, but it is a responsibility, and it doesn't go away. Uh, it is a responsibility of the Greek government. Uh, also, uh, pending this referendum or after this referendum, it is still a responsibility for the Greek government uh, to deliver on its financial commitments. And that's all I can say for now. We'll go to that side. The gentleman with the glasses and then the gentleman in the middle. Uh, Bruno for the Times. Um, you say you're going to reconvene. Uh, will, will Greece be um, in the room um, when you uh, reconvene? Could you, could you tell us that? Um, and you, you say that um, Greece must uh, honour its uh, financial um, obligations. And it's a very big financial obligation to the European Central Bank. Uh, coming up on the, on the 20th of July. Did you discuss the legal implications um, if Greece uh, defaults um, on that 6.7 billion over July and August? Um, I'm not going to speculate now about what may come in the coming uh, days. Uh, we will reconvene. It will be without the Greek colleague uh, to look at uh, any further steps we need to take to strengthen our position where necessary, etc. Uh, and we will come back to that uh, and I will inform you later this afternoon. The gentleman right there in the middle as the last question, and then I have to go back to work. Peter Spiegel from the Financial Times. If I could actually follow up on, on both those questions. First, one more try on what happens if the Greeks actually vote yes on Sunday. Um, the bailout will expire on Tuesday, which means there is no program in place. If the government were to come back to you saying, we would now like to negotiate a new program based on a proposal that the Greek people have supported, is that possible? Is that a basis for a negotiation? You seem to have ruled it out slightly politically because you don't think they can be responsibly implemented, but, but, but perhaps more technocratically, is that the basis for a new program to start? And secondly, you said, just said you would want to come back to us and talk about this later, but um, you've talked obliquely about steps the rest of the Eurozone needs to take to protect itself. I wonder now that we're in this situation that you're going to that meeting now, you could maybe expand on that a little bit more. Is this mostly the financial system you're talking about, protecting banks uh, in other countries that perhaps have Greek banks in them? Can you talk any more explicitly about what that conversation this afternoon is going to be like? Thank you. Uh, it'll be as broad as necessary, and I will come back to it later. But you can be assured that we are determined to work closely together to do what is necessary to use those famous lines again. Uh, to strengthen uh, and to uphold the credibility uh, of the Eurozone. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, on your first question, it's very much about what happens if. Um, I can't answer that. What I do know is that, uh, much to our regret, uh, the Greek authorities have decided to reject what was on the table so far, even though the, the talks weren't concluded, as far as we're concerned. That is a very regrettable uh, step to take. And secondly, that on the basis of 
what was on the table so far, or part of it, I believe, they're going to have a referendum. Uh, if, if it is a yes, uh, in the meantime, there are major problems already for Greece. So this is a, a big problem of risk management, I would say, for the Greek government to think about. Um, and if uh, yes, the question is, who are we uh, trusting, uh, who are we working with to then implement that program? Uh, so those are two major issues, major questions uh, in that scenario. Um, uh, the program expires, and that is uh, absolutely clear uh, at the moment. Thank you very much.